Welcome to Tito's Hot or Not list. Tux has a day off, so I, Tito Bendito, will be your host with the most. Xbox just dropped a bombshell of a game showcase, and I will be breaking down the ultimate list of recommendations for all you hardcore agents from The Division 2. We have separated the game changers from the game floppers, the sizzlers from the fizzlers, and the hot picks from the not-so-hot tricks. I know you've battled through the mean streets, outsmarted rogue agents, and conquered those treacherous dark zones, but now you might be wondering what else. That's where I come in with the hottest picks just for you. This list is specifically curated to complement your post-apocalyptic grind and add some serious spice to your gaming roster. These aren't here to replace your beloved division grime. Think of them as your side quests, your bonus content, your extra XP. So expect biting humor, brutal honesty, and a fiesta of fun as we dive into the top hits and skip the misses from Xbox's latest reveals. We'll laugh, we'll cry, we'll question the life choices of game developers and maybe, just maybe, we'll find out what's worth your precious gaming hours. Today's features come from many of the studios you know so well. Activision, Bethesda, Blizzard, and Xbox Game Studios. Whether it's intense co-op shooters, deep RPGs, or adrenaline pumping action games, there's something here to add a little extra spice to your gaming roster. So Division Agents, stay tuned because these hot picks might just be your next great adventure. So grab your Doritos, chug that Mountain Dew, and let's hit the start button on Tito's Hot or Not list. Roll the trailers and unleash the madness. First up is number 11. I've always liked the number 11. It takes the loneliest number and gives it a friend. That's one hell of an entrance. So this game is made to list basically because it's got a school crushing bone shooter mounted on his right arm. I mean, I will literally play this game just like a use that weapon. Do you remember the original Doom games from like back in the day? They're like the first video games ever made. This series has burned around forever. I feel like it was all about opening and closing doors. So let's pretty fun. It's an old classic coming to the new age. Well, except it's set to dark ages. And I gotta say, that's a lot of action in a short amount of time. In this hype reel, Bethesda games tell they have tons of story that really slows down the pace of the game. How much action do you think will be intertwined in this one? Can Bethesda actually make it boring? More importantly, how many buds will this thing have at launch? Bethesda has quite a reputation there. The engine they use is completely outdated. Only that thing is on its last leg. But this game has been under works. I can't imagine they're using an updated platform. I mean, these games don't turn out overnight. So because it's Bethesda, this might be one of those games that you want it to release and then sort of see how it goes before you dive in. We don't have an exact date yet, but Bethesda is same 2025. Let's see what they can do. Number 10. Have you ever dated a perfect 10? I'm not sure they really exist in the real world. Like Bigfoot. Now that I think about it, I once had a girlfriend that kind of looked like Bigfoot. So this game's called Stalker 2. It's based in the Ukraine around the Chernobyl disaster, which is super intriguing and a great place to base a shooter. There's some really creepy movies about Chernobyl, and I feel like this game plays right into that lore. What mysteries await at this abandoned site? Well, with this game, you can explore it without exposing yourself to dangerous levels of radiation. It kind of gives me some Resident Evil vibes, which I'm really digging. Also, some Cold War era atmosphere with a twist of modern tech. And what's really cool is that its 20th day is right around the corner on September 5th, 2024, and it's going to be available on the Game Pass. And remember, without the Chernobyl disaster, we wouldn't have the hot tub time machine. So, yeah, we're going to have to support this one. Number nine is the universe's way of saying, you'll never be perfect. It's the number of lives a cat has, and the number of times I've tried to beat a boss before rage quitting. Nine is just close enough to greatness to keep you trying, but far enough to drive you nuts. Your target is in possession of a radioactive device. Stop Carrington's attack at all costs. Good luck, Agent. I always 
always knew I had an instinct. I could see the world differently. I thought it would be like any other mission. And it's sort of like a cyberpunk meets Assassin's Creed. The open world seems quite expansive and dynamic. There's some cool tech here. It's definitely sci-fi futuristic. We don't have a ton of details on it yet, so no release date, but it will be coming out on the Game Pass. What caught my eye about this is the combat. It's really cool. It reminds me of the movie 300, you know, with the Spartans. It's got the slow motion effect, almost like it moves in and out of bullet time, which is super cool. I'd really like to get my hands on this for some gameplay testing. to lose everything before I could see. Number eight. It's like the infinity symbol got bored and decided to stand up. Plus, it's the number of Harry Potter movies, the number of Fast and Furious sequels before they added a the and got fancy, and the number of times I've re-watched Stranger Things, hoping to spot a new Easter egg. We all knew the risks when we ventured out beyond the gates. You helped us make something greater than the fear and death that surrounded us. Car Gorn a zombie is actually on my bucket list. And you get to take a hatchet job. This game looks brutal, super creepy. And it seems like a game you could spend so much time on, you'll end up being one of those zombies in the end. But around here, we love zombie games. So State of Decay 3 has no hard release date, but it will be coming out on Game Pass. That helped us find the courage to keep going. To fight on. Lucky number seven, right? It's like the universe's favorite number. Seven dwarfs, seven wonders of the world, and of course, seven seasons of Game of Thrones before the last one made us all wish it ended at six. We have received a distress call of unknown origin. There is no record of a star station in this orbit. Something is not right. Starfield's anticipated DLC Shattered Space is coming this year in 2024, except we don't actually know exactly when. I'm sure everybody's heard of Starfield by now. It was one of the biggest Xbox Game Pass releases. It was huge and also on Steam and it got so much publicity, it was crazy. But then it sort of just went all down the hill from there. And Tux can attest, he's actually got hundreds of hours in Starfield. He probably didn't know that because he said the game was so full of bugs that he wasn't comfortable recommending it or sharing it with his community. Not until they got off their butts and fixed that crap, which they recently did in an update in May. From what I'm hearing from Tux, he went in and tested the game and it turns out many of the bugs that were plaguing him in the past are now no longer there. But this game was actually really cool and you could sink in hours into it. Many people, Tux included, have hundreds of hours in the game and haven't even finished the campaign because there's just so much to do. You can get really creative with your ships can develop a fleet and customize them. They're gonna be introducing ground vehicles now too. You could also make bases, you can manufacture things, you could be a space pirate. So much to do in this game. It really is a good game. Too bad it had a rocky launch, but it looks like things are starting to come together and another patch just went live with new content. More on that later, but if you haven't dipped your toes into Starfield, it might be the time to do it. I'm excited to hear what Tux has to say and if he's gonna start covering this game in the near future. The number six. Six is the number of infinity stones Thanos needed to ruin everyone's day. The number of Star Wars movies in the original saga before things got a bit, well, complicated. And the number of times I've told myself just one more game and ended up playing till sunrise. Six might not be lucky, but it sure knows how to keep things interesting.
Use this. Make your own rules. It's my turn. I need this game in my life, and you do too, because let's just admit it, the Division 2 PvP, well, it sucks. This looks so cool. I mean, the punk thing kinda has an X defiant vibe, but this is way more goofy and unique. There are rules it looks like you can deploy, which are probably acting like your special abilities or maybe even an ultra. They show a flipping the world thing, or you can enlarge heads to make your headshots easier to get. How cool and fun is this game. So it's a hero shooter, probably arena style, probably fast paced. That's all we know. Coming 2025, I'm in. Ever heard about eight minute abs? Listen to this. Five minute abs. Oh, Shenandoah, I hear you calling. Men's are hard at work, cooking up shocking new ways to protect and preserve this Appalachian need. Yes, Skyline Valley is a stunning portrait of residence. Skyline Valley is a welcome home to all. The Fallout series brought this game new life in a big way. Now, although this isn't gonna be a new game, it looks like they're bringing a new expanded map. A lot of people that have never played Fallout before are now giving it a try. Ah, uh, the number four. It's the reliable workhorse of the number world. Four seasons. Four Hogwarts houses, and let's not forget the Fantastic Four, or the number of times you have to reboot your Wi-Fi before it finally works. Approaching Soviet airspace. Listen up, Jack. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him back to the West. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. The real one-man army. Freeze. Speak. That's right, Metal Gear Solid. It's on their list. If you like Tom Clancy games, if you like Splinter Cell, then you gonna like Metal Gear Solid. Three words for you, tactical, espionage, action. Now, we don't have a release date, but I can't wait to find out more. Definitely looks like a ton of fun to play. I love stealth mechanics. The number three, it's like the perfect trilogy. Think Lord of the Rings, The Dark Knight, and The Godfather. Three is the number of strikes in baseball, the number of attempts it usually takes me to finally land a headshot, and the number of wishes you get from a genie. So Bethesda brings us another one, and it's big! Indiana Jones, can you believe it? I mean, Harrison Ford is like the ultimate hero, and now he's got his own video game. A Harrison Ford video game. That's why you gotta get it. The guy's Han Solo, Indiana Jones. Come on, he single-handedly defeats the Nazis. Not too many people have that on their resume. And guess what? It's coming in 2024, and it's gonna be on a Game Pass. Holy moly. So we didn't see a ton of gameplay here. Lots of cinematics. So much more to be seen with this game. But what a wonderful title. I hope this one pans out. No bugs, Bethesda. No bugs. Two. It's all about duos. Mario and Luigi, Batman and Robin, and of course, me and my trusty gaming console. Ah! 
I'm so sick of Call of Duty, but Black Ops 6 has made the list in at number two because this is probably for me the most innovative thing I've seen brought to a game in a long time. There's lots going on here, too many details to cover in this video, but I do want to focus in on army movement. This concept is so cool and I can't wait to get my hands on it. It's going to make PvP epic and I can't believe I'm saying I'm excited for a Call of Duty game. And guess what? It's coming out this October on the 25th and it's going to be on the Game Pass. That's crazy, but listen to what the devs have to say. We've pushed ourselves at every corner to innovate and craft the most signature Black Ops experience for our players. Movement has been a consistent area of focus and innovation for Call of Duty. And with Black Ops 6, we're redefining movement across the entire game. For the first time ever, players can sprint in any direction and move like a true Black Ops action hero with an entirely new global system we call Omni Movement. This unlocks the ability to move like never before and seamlessly chain combat maneuvers like slide, dive, and our enhanced supine prone in full 360 degrees range of motion. From the beginning, we started with, you can't do this thing, why? And then realized people actually move that way. What happens if we get rid of that construct? And then instantly it opened up like, oh, if you can sprint in any direction, then you can dive in any direction, you could slide in any direction, which then led to all the on the ground movement and everything else chaining together. It's really been something that changes how you think and play the game, whether it's campaign, MP, or zombies. We truly believe that once you experience Omni movement, there's no going back. Finally, the number one, the top dog, the numero uno. It's the number everyone wants to be, the last one standing in a battle royale. This is the game that started it all for me. Back in the day, you used to have to be at your buddy's house in order to do cooperative and PvP gameplay. And I remember Gears of War was the first game, at least for me, to experience cooperative and PvP remotely. And obviously the PvP was absolutely amazing. The chainsaw at the bottom of the assault rifles were epic. The snipers were fun. The headshot explosions, oh my gosh. I already know this game is going to be great. Now we don't have a release date. It's going to be on Game Pass. 
podcast, and I'll be sharing more as we learn more. Thank you for hanging out with me today. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. What's crack a lackin'? This was another episode of The Division 2. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The Division 2. And if you like builds like this, check out the recommended build video I have here for you. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy a game from Ubisoft, enter the creator code Code Tuxedo Bandito to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me. I get it.